Hi, AFI Movie Club. I'm Brian Henson, and I produced and directed The Muppet Christmas Carol. I kind of love this scene for many reasons. To start with, I love the way Steve Whitmire scatted the song, which was very similar to the way my dad would sing, the way he swung the whole melody of tis the season to be jolly and joyous. But then if you can go back, very rarely did we show Muppets head to toe. So this shot particularly right here, for its time was a very fancy little setup that we did. This is before you could do full figure CG characters and stuff like that. These are puppets, these are hand puppets. And Steve Whitmire is heading up a team of three that are working Kermit. One person's working his legs, another working his free arm. Steve's working his head. Jerry Nelson is working uh, Tiny Tim on his shoulder. And they're all dressed in blue suits. So we were doing puppeteer removal. This was very early days for doing that. Quite probably the first production where we were removing puppeteers. All the way through Muppet Christmas Carol, when we knew we were doing puppeteer removal, we would have panels of black lights behind the cameras, always on throughout the whole scene. Whether we were doing a composite shot or not, that way, when we did do the composite shot and we used the black lights, it wouldn't make the scene or the set look any different than the shots on either side. And then in color timing, in the film color timing, we would remove any artifact from the black lights. We were quite ahead of our time. Nowadays, it seems like a lot of work to pull a clean key, but what puppeteer removal allows you to do is it allows the puppeteer to get much closer to the puppet which makes all the difference in the world. And then the ground that they're walking on, this was what was particularly hard. We wanted to see contact between the feet and the ground. So that ground is an old fashioned trick. That's a barrel. It's not flat ground. It's a barrel that's about four feet in diameter. So it's a long cylinder that has cobblestones with snow glued to it. And the barrel is rolling so that the puppeteers can be on stands behind working the characters. And then we composited them in front of a shot of the street with the camera slowly pulling back. My dad started it with the Muppet movie, trying to find ways to see the Muppets in full figure. So in the Muppet movie, he did it with Kermit and Fozzie dancing and then Kermit on the bicycle in that one shot. And then in Great Muppet Caper, my dad did a much more sophisticated bicycle scene, which I helped him with, which was Kermit and Piggy riding bicycles. So when I came to do Christmas Carol, I wanted to do another wonderful thing with, a, with full figure um, uh, Muppets. And, and that was the shot that I, that I particularly put a lot of attention into. There's quite a few full figure shots, but, th but that one was a really special one that was fun to do. With Michael, we talked about this contrast between Jim Henson's Muppets and Charles Dickens' Scrooge. And he was the Dickens side. He was Dickens' Scrooge. I'm back. So he, right from the beginning, said, I'm going to play this as if I'm doing a Christmas carol with the Royal Shakespeare Company. I'm going to be utterly committed and dramatic. And I'm never even going to wink at the fact that these are puppets around me. And that was really fantastic that he approached it that way because he is a funny man who likes to be funny. I mean, these are funny moments where he could have been funny. He's playing it so straight, which is of course making it funny. I think the one time he said, it's gonna be funny if I do this and I think I can do it without it looking like I'm trying to be funny is when Kermit says, uh, Mr. Scrooge, the bookkeepers would like to put a little more coal in the fire. And he answers with, and how would the bookkeepers like to be suddenly unemployed? <laughs> and he, and he bl just blows up. How would the bookkeepers like to be suddenly unemployed? He said, look, I think, I know it'll be funny in the theater, but I don't want it to look like I'm trying to be funny, but I think I can believe it in, in Scrooge's personality that, that he would explode with anger every now and then. And, and if I do it just in that one spot, it'll draw a laugh but it'll also make people go, oh, oh, Scrooge is somebody who actually his temper can flare. Um, and it worked kind of brilliantly. To make a Muppet movie is so hard. There's so many ways it can go wrong. What my dad used to say when people would ask him, did your work match your vision, how you envisioned it? 
before you started? And he'd always say, no, of course not. Because what was made could only have been made by that 150 people who made it with me. And if one person was different, it would have been different. <laughs> you know? So like when my dad would make a movie, and certainly when I make a movie, I have a vision. And it's very flexible. <laughs> it's a vision that if you have something that can come in and it can run on that highway without making the highway crash, I'll, I'll take it and integrate it because it's more exciting for me. It's more exciting for everybody when, when the different ideas come in and, and you end up with an end result that, that really um, you know, benefits from the, the best effort of all the people involved.